we started the chapter 2 from paper CHF I301 and the today's topic is internal standards or internal standard addition method. Previously we have studied standard addition method. In a standard addition method you have already taken the equal amount of the unknown means river water in all the volumetric flasks then externally added the standard substance. Suppose there is a stock of standard is given in first volumetric you have added 1 ml in second 2 ml in third 3 ml in fourth 4 ml and in fifth volumetric 5 ml then make volume up to the mark by using distilled water. After that we have measured the signal on the respective machine as absorbance uh, measurement on the UV with respect to photometer on colorimeter on AS or on FES. And this signal is plotted on y axis against concentration on x axis and from this after extrapolation of line we observed the concentration of a unknown substance and this concentration is called as a extrapolated concentration on the x axis. Here the internal standard addition method is slightly different from the standard addition method. Internal standard balance various random and the systematic errors then an internal standard is added to the sample reference and calibration standards in the same amount then third point is measurement results from standards as analyte signal divided by internal standard signal values are plotted according to standard analyte concentration. Here in first point I have written this, ed, uh, this type of standard addition balances random and systematic errors. Suppose anybody has performed a experiment by using calibration method and points are random or there is a scattering of points. Obviously the experiment uh, experimental results were affected by this type of errors and these errors can be minimized by the addition of internal standard substance. Then this substance internal standard is a substance which is added in equal amount in the sample in the reference substance and in the calibration standards. Next when the signal was measured on the machine, measured the signal for the analyte and signal for the internal standard substance and take a ratio of these two signals, analyte signal divided by internal standard signal and these values are plotted on the graph and these are plotted according to standard analyte concentration. Next slide is the internal standard is a substance or a compound. This is similar to the analyte but not identical to the chemical species of interest in the sample. For example, in the analyte SCL is taken and we have to add the internal standard but the internal standard is similar to SCL but not SCL that means the isotopic form of the SCL is there used as an internal standard that means DCL is used instead of SCL. SCL is already present in the solution and we have to add DCL. Obviously the chemical uh, composition is slightly different but the compound is same either DCL or SCL. This is called as an internal standard substance which is very similar to the analyte but not identical of the interested analyte sample. And the ratio of analyte signal to the internal standard signal, this ratio for the samples in 
samples is used to obtain their analyte concentrations from a calibration curve means by using this ratio we plotted a graph and from this we can obtain the analyte concentration then internal standards used needs to provide a signal that is similar to the analyte signal in most ways but sufficiently different so that the two signals are readily distinguishable by the instrument obviously analyte contains hcl and the internal standard contains dcl obviously deuterium is there and hydrogen is there that's why there is a slightly distinguishable uh, signals are obtained on the machine for example deuterated chlorobenzene is an external standard which is used in the analysis of volatiles on gcms because it is similar to chlorobenzene but does not occur naturally means c6d5cl it is an artificially prepared component or the compound and the chlorobenzene is a naturally occurring compound here we have to determine the analyte signal here analyte is the chlorobenzene and the internal standard substance is the deuterated chlorobenzene here are the advantages obviously initially we seen the internal standard addition method is useful for the minimization of the random error and the systematic errors again here is the next advantage the internal standard method is used to improve the precision and accuracy of results where volume errors are difficult to predict and control means internal standard method is used to reduce errors increase accuracy increase precision and here are the applications of internal standard addition the internal standard addition method is nowadays used in the liquid chromatography used in a mass spectrometry again used in a capillary electrophoresis again used in a gas chromatography in all type of techniques the sample is injected to the injection that's why this method is used to correct errors which are arising from the manual injection this is all about the internal standard addition method simply internal standard means the substance which is added it's not it's similar to the analyte but not exactly similar this is slightly different as scl and dcl and there are two signals obviously observed on the machine for dcl1 signal and for scl1 signal take analyte signal divided by internal standard signal ratio and from this ratio we can plot a graph and from this graph the analyte concentration can be determined